What happened to the heroes of the Predator movies? Why are Predators so attracted to heat? What's the reasoning behind their methods? Watch for even more questions we may never know the answers to. To date, no character, human or otherwise, has been featured in more than one film in the Predator franchise. The lack of any recurring characters is one of the franchise's strengths, but it does leave one curious as to how each human moves on with their life after surviving the yacht job. Each sequel has attempted to have Schwarzenegger reprise his role as Alan Dutch Schaefer, but he's refused, leaving the character's fate hazy for decades. In 2020, Arnold gave in for the 2020 video game Predator Hunting Grounds. This game includes audio journals accounting for Dutch's actions between 1987 and the game's 2025 setting. According to the journals, Dutch has been traveling the world searching for more evidence of the Yacht Jaw's presence on Earth. He teams up with the Otherworldly Life Forms program, the shady government agency from Predator 2. As the Earth gets hotter, Predators visit frequently, leading to repeated battles between Dutch and the Yacht Jaw. By 2025, he's been rebuilt using Yacht Jaw tech, fearless and fit despite his advanced age. This thing is hunting us. All of us. Across the Predator franchise, the Yacht Jaw have demonstrated a common modus operandi that includes a few signature kills. No Predator film would be complete, for instance, without someone having their skull and spine ripped out of their bodies in one swift motion. The Yacht Jaw removes skulls and spines to display them as trophies and add bones to their armor to show off their killing prowess. Their reasoning behind flaying a victim and leaving their bodies behind, however, is a little more murky. The intention behind hanging their skin prey is still the subject of debate among fans. The Yacht Jaw do not appear to collect the skins they remove from their victims, so it's clearly the bodies themselves that are important to the ritual. It's likely that these bodies are left as a form of intimidation to throw their next opponents off balance. There's also a theory that only those considered easy prey are flayed, as they are unworthy of having their bones collected as trophies. Not only did I kill this guy, this action says according to this theory, but I even had time to rip his skin off afterwards. If you don't want the same thing to happen to you, you'd better be more entertained. In Predator, Rebel Anna tells the mercenaries that their stalker matches the description of, quote, the demon who makes trophies of man from local folklore. The stalkers are said to only appear during the hottest summers. When the Yacht Jaw returned to Earth in Predator 2, it's during a record-breaking heat wave in LA. Predator hunting grounds implies that climate change has made the Earth a more attractive place to hunt. The natural assumption to make is that the heat mirrors that of the Yacht Jaw's natural habitat, and that a hot summer is the time during which the Earth is most habitable for both humans and Yacht Jaw. As the series progresses, the Yacht Jaw's preference in climate is less emphasized. Alien vs. Predator reveals some Yacht Jaw visit every 100 years in Antarctica. Furthermore, Aliens vs. Predator Requiem is set in Colorado, and the story is explicitly set near Halloween in The Predator. This doesn't mean that the Predators don't still prefer the heat, but it does remove its necessity. In Predator 2, Mike Harrigan discovers an alien hunter nicknamed City Hunter by fans has been on an undercover killing spree. The film concludes with Harrigan chasing the Predator to his ship and killing him. However, other Yacha have been watching all of this unfold, hidden by cloaking technology. They retrieve the dead Predator's body and leave LA. Out of this group of Yacha, only one is seen making kills. It's unclear if the others simply haven't been caught, remain on the ship the entire time, or if they are here on other business. Only one member of the Los Angeles hunting party, their leader Greyback, ever appears again in the Predator Expanded Universe, and that story does not account for his whereabouts during Predator 2. You can't see the eyes of the demon until him come calling. At the end of Predator 2, Harrigan receives a trophy from the Yacht Jaw leader for killing the city hunter. It's a flintlock pistol labeled Raphael Adolini 1715. This gift is evidence that the Yacht Jaw have been hunting on Earth for centuries. The 1996 comic Predator 1718 depicts the original encounter between the Yacht Jaw known as Greyback and pirate captain Raphael Adolini. Adolini, a criminal with a righteous moral compass, wants to return a chest of gold to the church from which it was stolen. His crew objects and mutinies. Greyback surprisingly joins Adolini and together they defeat his traitorous crew. Adolini is lethally injured and offers Greyback his pistol as a tribute. The protagonist of Alien vs. Predator is Lex Woods, an expert ice climber hired to guide an expedition to explore an ancient temple beneath an Antarctic island. 
Lex survives being picked off by the xenomorphs in Yachtjaw and allies herself with the Yachtjaw hunter Scar. She receives a Yachtjaw combi stick weapon as a trophy, and much of her fate after the Yachtjaw craft departs is unknown. Lex's arc hasn't been revisited or referenced in any expanded universe material. However, there is a piece of evidence that Lex, or at least her weapons, were recovered from the Antarctic battle site. In 2018's The Predator, Dr. Casey Brackett explores Project Stargazer's headquarters and finds a case containing Lex's spear. This seems to confirm that Alien vs. Predator is still part of the Predator canon. The action of Alien vs. Predator takes place inside an ancient temple in Antarctica, the site of a ritual where adolescent Yatja prove themselves against the universe's ultimate killing machines. Inside the temple lies an enslaved xenomorph queen, kept in hibernation for a century at a time. A few hours before a hunt, she's forced to lay eggs so that the Yatja will have something to test themselves against. In 2004's Ritual, the queen gets wise and instructs her children to set her free by melting her chains with their acidic blood. At the film's climax, the queen escapes the temple into the abandoned town and battles on the ice with Lex and Scar, the last human in Yachtjaw. They successfully chain her to a heavy iron vat and push it into the freezing water. The queen drops to the bottom of the sea and is presumably no longer a threat. Other films in the Alien series have shown that xenomorphs are capable of enduring the freezing, airless vacuum of space. It is likely the Queen could survive these conditions for a while or even forever. Nevertheless, the Antarctic Queen has never reappeared in the franchise's canon. Aliens vs. Predator Requiem picks up where the first AVP leaves off, with a xenomorph chestburster emerging from Scar's corpse. This xenomorph has taken on many of the traits of its yacht jaw host to become the even deadlier Predalien. When the Predalien crash lands a spacecraft loaded with xenomorph eggs in Colorado, another predator, Wolf, is set loose to clean up the mess. Wolf battles with the Predalien and a horde of xenomorphs, but this battle is moot. The story ends with the US government dropping a nuke on the village, destroying almost all evidence of the conflict. In the final scene, U.S. Army Colonel Stevens presents Miss Yutani with a plasma pistol fashioned by Wolf. Yutani seems to have plans for the pistol that are, quote, not for this world. It's implied that Yutani plans to reverse engineer the technology to advance her company's interest in space, leading to the Weyland Yutani Corporation's dominance of space freight and xenomorph experimentation in the Alien series. Requiem doesn't have a sequel, so we don't have many details on what will happen next. Also, the release of Prometheus in 2012 detached the Alien franchise from the continuity of AVP, leaving the future of the Utani Corporation uncertain. 2010's Predators takes the action off Earth entirely and follows a group of humans who are each abducted and transported to a planet that is a massive game preserve. Each of the human captives is a predator in their own right a soldier, a convict, a gangster, and so on. But most of them are no match for their pursuers, who are bigger and badder than any Yacha seen previously. They're picked off one by one until the only survivors are American mercenary Royce and IDF sniper Isabel. Predators ends with Isabel and Royce victorious over their hunters, but still stranded on the planet where another hunting season is about to begin. Unlike most protagonists in the Predator franchise, Isabel and Royce received a follow-up story immediately in the form of an official sequel comic, 2010's Predators Preserve the Game. The one-shot comic picks up two months after the film as Royce and Isabel continue to pick off Predators and salvage their gear. The Yajah determine Royce is a worthy opponent and gift him his own set of Predator armor to wear in one-on-one -on -one battles against a four-armed Super Yajah. But Royce learns to depend on someone else for a change and sets himself up as bait so that Isabel can get the kill. They remain trapped on the planet, waiting for an opportunity to hijack a starship. In The Predator, another yacht jaw comes to Earth, but this time he's not here to hunt. He's on the run from the larger, genetically enhanced, upgrade Predator. The fugitive crash lands in Mexico, but not before ejecting a pod containing some precious cargo. By the end of the film, both Predators are dead. With the help of young linguistics genius Rory McKenna, U.S. military scientists are able to determine that the rebel Predator came to Earth to deliver the humans a weapon, a powered suit of armor called the Predator Killer. Rory's father, Army Ranger Quinn McKenna, plans to wear it in battle next time the yacht jaw come calling. But why did the fugitive Predator decide to give this weapon to humanity in the first place? Does it have anything to do with the human DNA found in his blood? If he's here to help us, he's got a funny way of showing it, as he kills nearly every person he sees during his time on our planet. 
His apparently benevolent intentions are only revealed in the final scene of the film, a teaser for a sequel that has never happened. This last-minute twist may be the result of the film's reshoots, which reportedly changed a great deal of the film's overall plot. In fact, in one of the three filmed endings, The Fugitive's cargo pod contains Ellen Ripley, heroine of the Alien films. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about Predator are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.